Hello, I'm just going to run through some of the typical diagnostic workup algorithms of either screen detected breast abnormalities or patients who have clinical abnormalities. So just to remind you, these are institutional and provider specific. You know, these are not set in concrete. These are based around the algorithms that we use at Dartmouth-Hitchcock. I'm sure that if you asked 100 radiologists, you would have probably 100 different variations, but they should at least give you some guideline. And of course, there always is scope to add additional images at the discretion of the radiologist if the um, standard images um, don't sort out the problem. So I do think some sort of consistency is important. Um, it's going to reduce errors. It's going to reduce the number of repeated studies and maintain quality. It's going to improve your workflow because you can have the technologists um, obtain the standard images, then bring them to the interpreting radiologist who can then add any other ones. Um, it is, however, important in that setting to be able to have agreement within your section within the different radiologists what these standard images will be. Otherwise, um, it means a lot of coming back and forth with the text um, and a lot of confusion and additional imaging for patients. So I've split just for the purposes of this talk these workup categories into three different groups. Um, callbacks from screening, clinical abnormalities where the patient's presenting with a powerful abnormality, nipple discharge, etc., and then BIRADS-3 short interval follow-ups. Um, just to clarify some terminology, it does vary between different areas. Um, and so just to uh, make sure you're all clear, digital breast tomosynthesis is often abbreviated as DBT or 3D imaging. Full field digital mammograms uh, can be abbreviated as FFDM or 2D imaging. And then synthetic mammograms, which are, um, are processed and developed from the digital uh, tomosynthesis 3D images are called synthetic mammograms or synthetic 2D or synthetic FFDM. Um, I tend to use 2D, 3D throughout this talk just for clarity. So we have a number of different tools in our diagnostic toolbox that we may use alone or in combination. For mammography, 2D and 3D imaging, we can use our standard MLO and CC views, and then we can do spot compressions or focal compressions using a smaller paddle in, or in order to get more force over the area of concern and spread the tissues out. We may want to do an ML or an LM, so a true lateral view to get another different angle on the breast. We may want to look at additional areas of the breast, depending on where the area of concern is with XCCLs to look at lateral tissue, XCCMs to look at medial tissue. I think there is still a role, excuse the pun, for rolled views in certain circumstances, even with the presence of tomosynthesis. And then sometimes we want to do tangential views on the area of concern uh, with magnification views also being reserved. And then, of course, we have ultrasound. Just to demonstrate here um, some of not the, the full amount of additional views that we may obtain, but how we can look at the axillary tail or we can have a cleavage view to look at more medial tissue and so on. I'm sure that most of you are uh, familiar with these different views. Now, what about the addition of digital breast tomosynthesis to the diagnostic session um, setting as well as the screening session? It has been shown in a number of studies that it does improve the diagnostic evaluation, uh, both for those spot compressions, those focal spots, as well as to, for the additional imaging planes, such as XCCL. Um, we can't combine digital breast tomosynthesis currently with magnification views. Um, perhaps that's something we'll be able to do in future. But you do need to consider the radiation dose to the patient. Um, the TOMO images approximately double the radiation exposure, so you want to keep an eye on how many of those you are doing. So let's start by looking at callbacks. So starting first with calcifications. So pretty much the standard additional views for calcifications around the country will be a 2D mag true lateral view and a mag cc now whether you do that as a medial lateral or a lateral medial depends on where the calcifications are generally you want to place the calcifications against the image receptor so if these are lateral calcifications you want to do medial lateral for the best resolution now note you don't want to do mag mlos and i see these 
all the time coming in for us, um, to us for outside interpretations because you cannot usually make the diagnosis of milk of calcium on an MLO mag. You need a true lateral mag for that. We also usually obtain a 2D uh, true lateral full field view when we're working out calcifications. So this is extremely useful, particularly for those that end up going for stereotactic biopsy for localization. How about callback for asymmetries and architectural distortions? We usually start with a true lateral 2D, 3D, and then we will do focal spots 2D and 3D in um, any of the views that we saw, the abnormalities. So it might be CCE and MLO or one or other. Uh, we will include uh, additional imaging such as XCCLs or XCCMs if we see a far medial, far medial or far lateral abnormality, and we may include rolled views if the area um, does not efface or we have any concern about it. Now, some institutions prefer to do mag views rather than spot um, 2D, 3D views. Uh, we prefer the spot views. We found that they are most helpful unless there are any calcifications, in which case you might want to include a magnification view. If the abnormality persists or if the breast is dense enough that you're not sure that it's really a face, we will then go on to do ultrasound. Now, with well-defined masses, you may want to start uh, with ultrasound. We tend to do that to reduce the amount of unnecessary mammographic imaging in these patients. If you see it's a cyst that conforms in every way with the mammogram, you can stop there, or if it's a very um, clear malignant mass. Um, however, some places will start with mammography, with spot compressions or magnification views to look at these mags. And we do sometimes revert to MAMO if we cannot identify the mass by ultrasound. But I found that in 95% you know, of patients, we can identify that mass. All right, let's move on now to diagnostic exams. And I'm going to split these up a little differently. So for women over 30 who present with a palpable mass identified by themselves or by their providers, we will do uh, 2D, 3D, MLO, CC, and true lateral with a marker over the mass. Um, and we may or may not do some spot compression views, MLO and CC, with that marker over the mass. Um, we tend not to do those. We tend to do a tangential um, with the mass markers. We've really found that that's the most helpful. Um, depending on the area of concern, you might need to do XCCLs or XCCMs, and then our patients will all go on to focused ultrasound. Women over 30 who have focal pain, as you probably know, has a almost negligible um, incidence of malignancy in the absence of a palpable mass. We'll do a, just a standard 2D, 3D, MLO and CC view with a pain marker. And if they really do have focal persistent pain, um, so one finger type pain, we will then do an ultrasound. Women over 30 with nipple discharge, um, it's going to be, again, the 2D, 3D, MLO, and CC, but you can consider retroareolar magnification views, looking for subtle calcifications. In my experience, if it's a high-quality mammogram, those are really not necessary. Um, and then we will do ultrasound in the focused retroareolar area. In women under 30 years, we have a slightly different algorithm um, because we want to reduce the radiation exposure to their uh, more sensitive breasts. We tend to start with ultrasound for all indications, with mammography being at discretion of the radiologist. So when might we go on and do mammography? Well, if the ultrasound is non-diagnostic, but when we clinically examine the patients, and this is super important, we really feel there is a true palpable mass there that we're concerned about. Um, also, we may do them if the ultrasound is highly suspicious of malignancy, so we see some nasty speculated mass. We're going to go on and do bilateral mammograms in them because that's going to be very important to get. Uh, that may give us a, a better extent of the disease. We may see a lot of calcifications, for example, that we had not suspected. If we examine the patient and it feels like there's nothing there or it feels like it's a fat lobule, we can see it. A, a, a fat lobule when we do that palpation scanning um, technique that's so important, then we will not usually go on in, this, in these patients and do an, a mammogram. All right, let's move on to men. Well, for both palpable masses and focal pain, 
we start with just our regular 2D, 3D MLOCC um, series. We may do some spot compressions if it's not typical for gynecomastia. Uh, when do we go and do ultrasound? Well, if it's not classical gynecomastia um, or for masses that are not in the subareola area. Um, for under 30 year old men, we will ultrasound first. Now, our final category is short interval follow ups. So BIRADS threes, um, and we split these into calcifications and not calcifications. So for calcifications at six months, the initial six months, we'll just do magnification views in the true lateral and CC planes. At 12 and 24 months, we will do bilateral CC MLOs, both 2D and 3D, plus the magnification views in the true lateral and the CC planes. For asymmetries and masses, at six months, we will do a unilateral MLO and CC 2D, 3D, plus spot views used for initial diagnosis. So if it was only seen in the CC view, we'll only do a spot CC. At 12 and 24 months, we'll do bilateral CC and MLO, full field 2D and 3D, and we don't usually repeat the spot images at that time unless there's any concern. So I hope this has given you an idea of a typical set of workup algorithms used in diagnostic mammography. As I said, there is a lot of variation used in different centers. Thank you for listening.